Welcome to Christian Worship in God's House at St. John's. We gather together for this 10th Sunday after Pentecost and join in Divine Service Setting 3. It begins for us on page 184 of our hymnals, or you may follow along in your service folder. We stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of God's word, announce the grace of God unto you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our intro from Psalm 55 as printed in your service folder.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray the collect of the day as printed in your service folder. Merciful Lord, cleanse and defend your church by the sacrifice of Christ. United with him in holy baptism, give us grace to receive with thanksgiving the fruits of his redeeming work and daily follow in his way through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading appointed for this 10th Sunday after Pentecost is recorded in the 23rd chapter of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you, filling you with vain hopes. They speak visions of their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. They say continually to those who despise the word of the Lord, it shall be well with you. And to everyone who stubbornly follows his own heart, they say, no disaster shall come upon you. For who among them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see and to hear his word? Or who has paid attention to his word and listened? Behold, the storm of the Lord. Wrath has gone forth, a whirling tempest. It will burst upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and accomplished the intents of his heart. In the latter days you will understand it clearly. I did not send the prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have proclaimed my words to my people, and they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their deeds. Am I a God at hand, declares the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have, have said who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall there be lies in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart, who think to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, even as their fathers forgot my name for Baal. Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let him who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, declares the Lord? Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We speak responsibly. The gradual is printed in your service folder. Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. The epistle reading is recorded in the 11th and 12th chapters of the letter to the Hebrews in the New Testament. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. 
By faith, Isaac invoked future blessings on Jacob and Esau. By faith, Jacob, when dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph, bowing in worship over the head of his staff. By faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus of the Israelites and gave directions concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. By faith he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood, so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. By faith the people crossed the Red Sea as if on dry land. But the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God." Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the singing of the Alleluia and the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Jesus said, I came to cast fire on the earth, and would that it were already kindled. I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how great is my distress until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. For from now on in one house there will be five divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. This is the gospel of the Lord. We join together in the common confession of our Christian faith. We make use of the words of the Apostles' Creed. They are printed for us on page 192 or the inside back covers of our hymnals. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
You may be seated. We invite the children to come forward for the children's message. As they do, we sing our children's message song as printed in our service folder. Good morning. You excited to be up here? Are you excited to be up here? Yeah, I know what you're really excited for. <laughs> School's going to start in a couple of days, right? Yeah. You're going to you're going to be happy to, you're going to be in Mrs. Steele's classroom. Yeah, that's going to be fun. You excited about going back to school? Very good. Okay. I want you to do one thing for me this morning. I want to put your hand, put your hand up. Put your two fingers like that. Just hold up nice and high. Okay. Okay. Very good. Way back when, long, long time ago, when I was your age, our nation was involved in a war. And there were people who didn't like us being in a war. They would rather have had us be at peace because peace is always preferable to war. And so they would go around and they would give a greeting to each other and they would say, peace. And as a sign of that greeting, they would put up these two fingers, except they would spread them. All right, so now you spread the fingers like that. It makes it look like a letter V and they would say, peace. But in order to say peace with this sign, what did they have to do with their fingers? They had to take them from being together to separating them or dividing them. So as they were giving a greeting of peace, they were dividing their fingers. Well, I thought about that as Jesus said, he did not come to bring peace, but division. And that sounds awfully strange coming from the mouth of Jesus because he is the Prince of Peace. And when he was born, the angel said, Peace, goodwill to men, you know, on earth type of thing. And yet Jesus said he came to bring division. Well, unfortunately, it does happen that way. Uh, what are we going to say about Jesus? Are we going to claim him as our Savior and the Lord of our lives? Or are we going to reject him and not want him? And sometimes those uh, decisions break up families. Some people who are very close to one another in earthly relationships then become divided, separated, and far apart in their spiritual life because some have claimed Jesus is the Prince of Peace and others don't want him that way. So we pray that the Holy Spirit will work in our families families so that we can be at peace with one another as fellow believers in Jesus as our Savior. Now I'm going to have you fold your hands and we'll pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for coming into our lives, bringing us your peace between your Heavenly Father and us. We pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, that peace would extend from us to those around us, especially to those closest to us, our loved ones. We pray this in your name. Amen. We're going to sing our hymn of the day. Hymn 667, Saints, See the Cloud of Witnesses, him 667. 